It's built like a tank. Hey, beautiful people, Vin Stone back for another interfacing Linux, and this week I have brought you a Smurf, the Smurf box, or, or if we use its Christian name, uh, the DigiDesign Inbox 2 Mini. Yeah, it's an interesting piece of kit uh, from 2007. Built like a tank, but this is what went, well, this is what would be called a budget interface back then. And uh, you would end up paying about 195 pounds, that's about $240, for the privilege of owning it. But it could be had for a lot cheaper these days. And um, what drew me to it is 52 dB again, and it does a 48K sample. It's 24-bit USB powered. Look at that. Old man Vin talking about something without a FireWire port on it. And uh, they say it's every bit as good as the uh, original Inbox 2 Pro. So I'm gonna to want to put it on the uh, chopping. Maybe I want to put it on the chopping block, the testing block. Can you have a testing block? We now have a testing block. That's how that's going to work. But I did, I did search the Googles high and low to find out if this thing could in fact Linux. And results were inconclusive. I had some people say, "Hey, the input works, output doesn't work." Other people saying it just wouldn't pick up at all. So I had to find out. Now. If I'm to give you a too long didn't watch, the Inbox 2 Mini, in fact, does Linux. But in order to find out how oh well, we're going to need to take a closer look. So we do what we do every week. Start with an overview. Then we're going to set it up. Then we're going to do a sound check, round trip latency. And I'm going to put it into an outdoor session, let it run for 15 minutes, see if I can force some X runs. Then we'll wrap it up with what works and what nopes. All right, check it out. It's the M, it's the box, and it's open. I'm gonna get, I don't know if lucky, but uh, it's got all the stuff. A setup guide, getting started. What's in here? Mm, well, okay, obvious stuff. How to plug it in. Health and safety. Yes, I promise not to eat. Ooh, look, CRT monitors. You don't see those too often. Well, hopefully you don't. If you do, my apologies, but yeah. There is that, and we have a quick setup guide. I like these. I always, this is the closest thing to instructions, I believe, that I ever pay attention to. Unless I really get lost, but it's just showing us uh, the front, the back, how to plug a guitar, a microphone, and some monitors and headphones into it. And some weird hollow disk thing. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, look, Windows. That's like XP, isn't it? I think not the right person to answer that. All right, let's see if I got what I paid for, which wasn't much. Hey, we have a DigiDesign M bunks too, on the Smurf box. Okay. Ooh, silica gel. Don't eat that. Long story. Uh, let's get this guy open. Um, hit the camera. Promised myself I wasn't going to do that, but it, it's going to happen. This thing is heavy. It is all metal, except for the four knobs. Strangely, they're not metal, but you're not going to dent it. It's going to dent other things. But we got two line ends. Um, then your preamps, input one, input two, headphone jack, that's the thing. The digi logo warnings from the FCC, it does have a blemish on it, but the back is relatively straightforward. You know, you have the mic DI selection and you have a pad, you have phantom power and you have your balance and a direct line. Then on input two, you have a DI. So you do have monitor in and out and the USB even have a USB cable for the USB. Doesn't match. Hmm, kind of. Probably was the original one included. <music> Setting up the Inbox 2 is very straightforward. Just using Cadence, I'm going to select the ELSA driver and the M2 from the device and interface. I'm going to put that on uh, period buffer 3. 
and we should just be able to start it up right at 48k, 256 samples. And if we open Katia, we have our two in and two out. You have MIDI ports that don't exist. The text there on the board, but uh, there's no way to access it. This is the Golden Age D2 Large Diaphragm Dynamic Microphone. Running into the Art TPS2 preamp, then into the DigiDesign Inbox 2 Mini. And this Teflon balancing act is the Golden Age D2 Large Diaphragm Dynamic Microphone plugged directly into the DigiDesign Inbox 2 Mini. And this is the AT2020 Condenser Microphone to test the 48 volt phantom power in the DigiDesign Inbox 2 Mini. And finally, we have the OSP High Performance DL330 Dynamic Microphone plugged directly into the Inbox 2 Mini. Well, at the end of the day, the DigiDesign Inbox 2 Mini, it's a budget interface from the time that $240 was considered budget. It's built like a tank. It has decently powerful preamps that, and most importantly, it just works TM under Linux. You plug it in, you go. I mean, seriously, if you're in the market for like your first interface and you've been considering like the low of the low end, like a Behringer UMC-22. Get this instead. Just do it. It's better in every possible way. And that's coming from me. I mean, I'm no stranger to Behringer gear, and I have some pricey bits. But if we have to talk what works and what nopes, let's start with a warp. Warps? Yes. How about we start with a works? Because jack support, it's there. No playing around. Just boom, boom. It's in. Pulse audio. Since you're going to insist on using this as a sound card, just plug it in. It picks up. You have the options for input, stereo input. Well, you know, mono input, stereo output. It does have options for digital, but they're not on the back. So you're not going to be able to use those. Um, 52 dB again. You can drive a dynamic mic like this one. Or a, let's see, PR40, PR30B, something like that. Um, Road Podcaster. Uh, yeah, all those should work. And it's not FireWire. So it's just USB. It's USB 1, but USB nonetheless. No extra power cords needed. But we do need to address the nopes. And I, this could be a big one depending on what you're using it for. If you're using it for voice recording, um, streaming, anything alike, it's not going to be an issue. But 
being USB 1, it is limited to 48K sample rate. That's, uh, doesn't really bother me since my entire chain's 48K and I don't see an issue there. But another thing, mm, this did kind of bother me. For your direct monitoring, there is not a mono switch. So that could be a problem if you were using the uh, headphones. Not really a problem. It's just like playing with your mix and getting everything centered out versus like being in the left ear. That could bug you a little bit. And um, being old school USB, you can only think you can only get this down to about 64 frames or 64 buffer. And uh, it's probably not going to be a problem because, you know, you can really do like direct monitoring at 64, no problem whatsoever. 120, even 256, it's not going to be an issue. But we need to talk about what you should expect to pay in 2020. Good news, not much, because you're looking at 30 to $40 and there's no shortage of these critters on eBay. I, they're everywhere. And so you just pick and choose, find the one like I did that was effectively new in box. And uh, there'll be a link in the description to eBay for these guys. But that's going to do it for this week's show. As always, big sloppy things to our patrons who make this possible, each and every single one of them are the absolute business. But if you have some unused hardware or anything of the like, you know, under your bed and hiding in a closet, sitting in your rack, that uh, you'd like to donate to a reasonably, I think it's a good cause because we're trying to figure out if these things do work under Linux, maybe save some people some money. Um, I'd be happy if you sent them my way. Contact information is in the description. And um, yeah, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, go have fun. Go make something awesome. All right. Bye. Say bye, Smurfbox. I'm called Smurfbox. Bye-bye.